Okay, so here's the first thing that I do. The first thing I do is I actually don't look at the history. I know that you guys in in uh, your general in your general practice won't be able to do this, but I don't look at the history because I like to try to form an opinion. So is this a dog, a cat? So this is a dog, short lumbar vertebrae. The spleen is kind of chunky. I don't see open feisty, so I think maybe the the animal is uh, is not particularly young. But I also don't get a ton of spondylosis, so it's not particularly old. Liver looks good. Spleen's a little big. Colon has gas. Stomach mildly gas filled. Pylorus gas filled. So I kind of form an opinion, and then I look at the history. And here we go. This patient's a three-year-old uh, female spade, presented for melana. Started having diarrhea a couple of days ago. Increased frequency. Could have eaten something. No new treats or other food. Doesn't get into things. Blood started showing up in the stool yesterday. No medications. Okay. Three radiographs are dated October 7, coming 2023 period, new line. The caudal thorax is normal period. The liver is normal period. The spleen is mildly enlarged period. The stomach is mildly gas distended period. This includes a gas filled pylorus on the left lateral view period. The colon is gas distended period. The urinary bladder is small and fluid opaque period. The small intestine is normal in size, comma, coarse and content, period. Abdominal serosal detail is adequate, period. The cecum is the gas-filled structure to the right of midline on the VD view at the level of L3 and L4, period. Numeral 1, period. Test negative for a small intestinal mechanical obstruction, period. New line 2, period. Probable gastroenterocolitis, dash. Consider primary inflammatory, comma, toxic, comma, Dietary intolerance slash indiscretion, comma, infectious slash parasitic or extraintestinal pathology such as Addison's disease, period. If the patient has not responded to supportive care within 24 hours, comma, consider follow-up abdominal ultrasound, period, new line two, period, three, period, splenomegaly, dash, consider lymphoid hyperplasia, given the patient's younger age, period, congestion from sedation could be considered if clinically appropriate, period, more sinister disease such as splenitis or round cell neoplasia, and sequestration slash consumption of blood cell lines, open paren, E-G-I-M-H-A, close paren, are perhaps less likely, period. Let me see if I skip the kidneys. Got a left kidney right here, which is normal. Uh, and there's a right kidney, probably, or even a left kidney right here. And then the caudal cortex of so the kidneys are normal. The kidneys are normal, period. All right, anybody got any questions or concerns about this? Any issues? Pretty straightforward. Done with that case. Let's go on to the next one. The history is two-year-old lab pit mix, female, and uh, assessment, concern for a toy or corn cob ingestion. And again, all these cases, like I, I haven't seen these cases before, so that's, I think, one of the things that makes it a little nerve-wracking. First thing you'll notice, dog's pretty rotated, right? So, you know, his, his pelvic limbs are flexed. It's rotated. It's probably unruly. Technicians, nurses have probably tried their best. Um, rotated. He's more centered there, which is great. This kind of caught my attention right here. It's a little bit more striated. Um, possible gastric foreign body. Three radiographs are dated October 8, 2023 period. New line. The caudal thorax is normal, period. You want to make sure no pneumonia. The liver is normal. Despite the cranial displacement of the gastric axis, there is adequate ventral liver period. The spleen is normal, period. The kidneys are mostly obscured on the VD view, but appear normal on the lateral view, period. The caudal abdomen is not fully included on this test, period. The stomach is mildly gas-filled, period. The pylorus is gas-filled on the left lateral view, period. Discrete gastric form material is not evident, period. The gastric rugal folds are a bit robust in the fundic region on the VD view, period. The abdomen is not distended, period. Abdominal serosal detail is adequate, period. The colon contains formed feces, comma, gas, and small mineral fragments, period. The majority of the small intestine is empty or mildly gas-filled, period. A segment caudal to the pylorus on the left lateral view is mildly gas-filled, but not overly distended, period. Ventral to the colon and the caudal abdomen on the right lateral view at the level of L4 and L5, comma, there's a segment of small intestine with some striated soft tissue and admixed gas period. This loop is also not overly distended period. Numeral one period, test negative for a small intestinal mechanical obstruction period, new line two period, non-obstructive jejunal 
foreign material versus incompletely digested food, new line, three pairs, small colonic mineral fragments. The findings on this test support the clinical history of dietary and discretion period. A discrete corn cob foreign body is not evident a period. Given some of the segmental distension and the colonic mineral and historical dietary and discretion, come and consider 12 hours of supportive care and either repeat abdominal radiography if there is no improvement within 24 hours after starting supportive care or abdominal ultrasonography period. The repeat abdominal radiography can help determine if the small intestinal distension resolves, period. What is going on with the lungs? The lungs, man, the lungs, uh, when you take, you know, uh, quickly on the lungs, everybody's got a bronchial pattern at the periphery of field of view. So some of it can be the technique. You can see it's very contrasty. All the different uh, opacities are popping out the the mineral of the the spine. So I think when the when you have a really high contrast study, a high contrast technique, which some clinics will give you, the beam comes out, it fans out, and when it diverges like that, it always looks like everybody's got a bronchial pattern in the caudal lung lobes uh, on an abdominal radiograph. And so I just learned early on, I would call bronchial patterns, call bronchial patterns, then they would take chest rads and they would be normal. So then I, I relaxed on the uh, bronchial pattern thing. So my guess is it's not a big deal. I was looking to see pneumonia, you know, left lateral view. You'll get a little bit of titch in pneumonia that'll hide right over that, that area. And that'll be a problem. So here's another one. You ready? So let's see here. We got one, two, three, four, five. So first I like to see what are we dealing with? We got five reds. Okay. And they're all of the abdomen and they've done a great job of, uh, of doing that. So I'm going to give you the history. Uh, we've got a 18 month old German shepherd vomiting. Talia, Dr. Grand is worried. She's worried. Um, I think it's right to be worried. You got a young dog. So, uh, what she's talking about is this loop right here. And so we kind of, you know, don't want to zoom in too much. The answer is not going to miraculously show up with the zoom button. So now I'm going to go for it. Okay. And I know this is going to sound boring and like a broken record, but we just go in the same pattern every time, like a, like a machine, like the, like the machines that are coming for my job pretty soon. Uh, but I'm just going to go the way that I always go to make sure I don't miss anything. And then at the end, you sort of try to tie it together. The caudal thorax is normal period. The liver is normal with the sharp caudal ventral margin period. The splenic size is normal for the breed period. The stomach is mostly mildly gas filled period. The gastric rugal folds are thick period. The colon contains formed feces and gas period. The urinary bladder is small and fluid opaque period. The left kidney is normal period. The pylorus is gas filled on the left lateral view period. The stippled soft tissue and gas to the right of midline on the VD view is in the colon period. Abdominal cirrhosal detail is adequate period. So this is spleen. The majority of the small intestine is mildly gas distended period. Some of the small intestine is likely mildly fluid filled, which could contribute to the impression of increased wall thickening period. In the mid abdomen on the lateral views come there is a segment of small intestine that is gas distended and larger than the remainder of the loops period. However, come on the right lateral view, this loop is less distended when compared to the left lateral view period. The small intestine is normal in course. What I do, what, what, what I see here is formed feces in the colon, right? So the formed feces in the colon tells you that it's most likely acute. So maybe you got some time. Okay. The stomach is empty, a little bit of gas, um, a little bit of gas, rugal folds are thick. Uh, this is how looking right here it's not definitely fabric you see how these all look kind of thick 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 less thick so i agree this loop is bothersome but here's how i would approach it numeral one period segmental enteropathy dash c comments new line two period gastritis and probable gastroenteritis New line three paired, otherwise come a normal breed appropriate abdomen. The dilated segment of intestine in the mid abdomen on the lateral view is less distended on the right lateral view, period. Consider 
follow-up imaging given the concern for dietary indiscretion slash intolerance and the presence of this loop period. An exploratory laparotomy is not recommended at this time period. It could be beneficial to perform supportive care for the next eight to 12 hours with fasting and repeat abdominal radiography to determine if the loop resolves or progresses period. If this is declined, come and consider follow-up abdominal ultrasonography if there is no improvement within 24 hours after starting supportive care period. All right. So you kind of have to decide right away. I like Lucy was talking, Dr. Curtin was talking about this could be like sort of a gray zone thing. So it's definitely for me, not obstructed. This loop that's too big, Dr. Graham pointed out, it is too big and it definitely jumps out. And you should definitely say that this isn't really normal. Um, but we've got formed feces. So we've got a little bit of time and the loop is less distended on this loop, uh, on this, on this, uh, this other view. So um, the combina combination of those makes me think maybe the dog's not obstructed and, and we have some time to, to figure out if it's going to resolve. Also, you have to remember when dogs become obstructed um, from a mechanical process such as a foreign body, it tends to resolve in pooling of fluids and then you get the luminal distension and fluid-filled gut. So typically when you, said these, when you see these segmental enteropathies, there's typically a fluid component and this loop right here, the one that's bothering us is mostly gas-filled. And so I just, this keeps bothering me. I can't tell if that's caudal ventral to the pylorus on the right lateral view. Come on, there's a segment of small intestine that has ill-defined soft tissue with gas period. This could be non-obstructive foreign material period. I still don't think it, it you know, I don't think it changes the, uh, the workup. But this is sort of a difficult case because you've got this loop and we've been trained to say well, we've got two populations. But you have to take into account that one, I don't really see aside from maybe there, I don't see like a foreign body associated with this loop. The colon has formed feces, so you got a little bit of time um, and the loop that's affected is not fluid filled. The caveat to that is if, the, if it's really acute, there won't be fluid in it. But like I don't see... It's tough because all of this stuff in here, you you wonder about it, but I think it's all um, I think it's all colon. All right, next case. Oh boy, one, two, three, four. Okay, so let's see. Young dog, right? Everybody sees the feces. The caudal vertebral bodies have anomalies here. This is sort of corkscrew tail, so you're thinking brachycephalic. And they're honing in on the musculoskeletal, so you think the dog's kind of limping. So now let's see the history. Uh, Five-month-old French bulldog, male intact, history of left rear limb lameness about a week ago. All right, so here we go. First thing, I like to look at the articular process joints here, making sure we don't have any trauma. Those You got to really look closely to see those. Then we look at the capital, or sorry, the... the uh, End plate physis, those all look good. Lumbosacral joint looks good. Intervertebral foramen look good. Don't forget, we will make sure we're not missing anything in here. Okay, so I just focus in. I, I, I do it like I'm eating my, my plate one helping at a time. So vegetables here, and then we're going to move on to the meat. And then at the end, we try to put it all together. So I'm just focusing in on the vertebral column, making sure we don't have any Evidence of trauma, urinary bladder, splenic tail. These look good. Sacroiliac joints look good. Okay, next let's go on to the, um, there's superimposition with the stifle, right? But, uh, sorry. Okay, distal femoral physis is fine. Patellar ligament is fine. I, I vaguely see fat here. This looks like that. So, uh, and there's no swelling. So tibial tuberosity avulsion is not, not going to happen. Okay, young dog, right? So think young dog things like OCD. There would be swelling in here, usually panosteitis. You see pano, looking for patchy thumb printing in, in the uh, medullary cavity. I don't see that. HOD, I don't see that. Tibial tuberosity avulsions, don't see that. Popliteal lymph node looks good. Bop, bop, bop. My eyes were looking at this, and then I kind of was wondering it went away. So maybe it's from the ileal wing. He's rotated with his hips. Popliteal lymph node looks good. The left stifle joint looks good. But you can see, I mean, it's it's hard to see. 
The other thing people forget about is the musculature. So pelvic limb musculature looks pretty good. So sometimes you can get an idea for what limb a patient's affected. And then this looks like a frog leg view. So I wonder if they're worried about uh, tibial tuberosity or the um, capital femoral physis. Lesser trochanter, those are normal. The lumbar vertebral column is well aligned, period. The stifle joints are normal, period. Panosteitis is absent, period. The included abdomen is normal, period. The lumbosacral. Junction is normal period. The left popliteal lymph node is normal period. The capital femoral physis are normal period. The hip joints are congruent period. Pelvic limb musculature is appropriate and symmetric period. The tibial tuberosities are normal period. New line, new line. Normal age appropriate study dash a reason for the patient's clinical signs is not determined from this test period. All right, next case. Okay, I'm going to give you the, this is a nine-year-old female pug. All right, let's play a game. I got the history. But I'm I'm gonna withhold the the history because I want you to tell me if this is a case. So there's three views: VD view, lateral, right and left lateral. Is this case urinary or GI? Feel free to comment. the The patient's signs are either GI related or urinary related. Mm -hmm. This is a hard. It's a hard game. And I uh, you you can be wrong. So this is a a nine year old female spade pug that has hematuria. L1 is transitional with a hypoplastic left rib and a hypoplastic right rib that is larger and has lumberization period. The patient is obese period. The left kidney is normal period. The right kidney is normal period. The caudal thorax is normal period. The urinary bladder is small and fluid opaque period. The intra-abdominal urethra is not pathologically distended period. Radiopaque renal and cystic calculi are absent period. The stomach is mostly empty period. The colon contains a small amount of formed feces and gas period. The small intestine is normal in size, comma, course, and content period. The majority of the small intestine is mildly gas distended period. The liver is equivocally large period. T13-L1 and L5-6 are narrowed, but are affected by beam divergence and patient positioning period. One period test negative for radiopaque urolithiasis dash Urinary tract sonography can help evaluate for cystitis, comma, poorly mineralized or radiolucent calculi or more sinister process such as urinary bladder neoplasia, period, new line two, period, mild hepatomegaly dash, consider endocrine slash metabolic, common infectious slash inflammatory and slash or neoplastic etiologies, new line three, period, obesity, new line four, period, transitional L1. Yeah, they appear pushed down. I think the pushing down, so this push down look, uh, could be created by a couple of things that come to mind. Um, the first is the dog is rotated. So when dogs are rotated, it'll make everything, it'll make a lot of things look like they dip and the intra-abdominal fat could displace the intestine. So if you CT this dog, you'll notice just a wall of fat in, in the patient. And that's likely contributing to this appearance because what we don't see pushing it down you know, this right here is the iliopsoas. So the iliopsoas or the filet mignon for you meat eaters, uh, it kind of courses up through here. So it'll give you an opacity. But you can see these kidneys so well. And you know the kidneys are fluid and gas, uh, sorry, are uh, fluid and soft tissue. And because you can see them, that has to mean they're surrounded by something that's less opaque. And in this case, it's, it's fat. And so what you don't see pushing down on this intestine is something that's fluid uh, or soft tissue. And so it's got to be fat. So I don't see a soft tissue mass. Some of this dipping of some of these uh, intestine could be because the dog's rotated. Yeah. So this dog presumably is trying to uh, breathe just to stay alive um, because of his brachycephalic conformation. So we will see a lot of times just a lot of gas through the gut um, in patients that don't have GI, GI disease. New line five period T13-L1 and L5-6 degenerative intervertebral disc disease versus a positional artifact. You have to kind of be wimpy with the, the disc disease when they're when the hips are rotated, the patient sort of rotated and the beam diverges, but man, that looks pretty, pretty narrow. So the ribs, the hypoplastic ribs, yeah. So this is what I did when I first popped up the study is I looked here and I thought, well, first I saw this. And so this one is smaller than that one and it's got lumberization so it's thicker towards the the vertebral body than this one so you see that thickness right here and this there's there's no rib here it's presumably cartilage because this little nugget out here is is ossified 
uh, rib. So if you were to do cross-sectional imaging, you could maybe see something through here. So this dog has these sort of hypoplastic ribs. Then my next thought was, are these associated with T13 or L1? And so then I look back here to see if the dog had a transitional lumbar vertebra. And <clears throat> it doesn't really look like that. So I think this is seven. So I flipped the dog back over and I went seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Well, one shouldn't have ribs. And so this is, is not normal and it's a transitional L1. And the only reason this really is important besides uh, people getting your reports and thinking that you're actually looking at them is if these dogs have back surgery. Uh, this will give a surge and a nightmare if it's, if, it's not, um, if it's not on their radar. So when I talk about uh, you know T13 at L1, you're like, well, he's got ribs, and it's because that ribs are uh, with L1. I'm going to pull up a couple of known cases and see if you guys can tell me what's wrong with the patient. Okay. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven rads. Okay. This is a dog. What you should take away from just looking at this one rad is you go, this is a dog, and I see physis. So this is a young dog. Um, this dog is uh, a young dog that's presented for vomiting. Okay. So one of the things... Um, so here's what I do for the GI. Okay. So first thing I do is I look at the stomach to see how big, how distended it is. And so on this particular dog, this, you see these sort of amorphous gas, that's probably gas interdigitating in the rugal fold. So you don't get the impression that the stomach is overly distended. It sort of feels collapsed. So the stomach is not collapsed. The next thing I do is I look for the colon because if it's not colon, it's, it's small intestine. Okay. So this thing that looks like a C right here, that's cecum. You want to find the cecum because it's usually a large gas-filled structure and it freaks you out. I'm going to go to a VD view. Is there a VD? Yeah. So there's cecum, okay? And so near the cecum is the colon. So that's probably colon, and this is probably colon. And you want to identify the colon, again, because you want to then decide that everything else is is small intestine okay so colon when the dog is rotated that colon will dip down okay so colon it just vanishes through here uh but it's it's probably there so that means that everything down here is small intestine everything down here is small intestine um when i evaluate the small intestine uh i i look at the size the course and the content so the size does everybody is there two populations or does everybody look like they're kind of the same? So what do people think? Two populations or things kind of look the same? I think for the most part, everything's kind of the same. A little bit of gas. There's probably some granular stuff here. This is kind of the same, kind of the same. It's a little bit bigger than this. It's a little bit bigger, but it's not vastly. These all look a little bit bigger than maybe like this one, but it's not massively bigger. Okay, the course there is some stacking here, but then it kind of goes away and you've got this big old spleen. And so the stacking that we were so worried about goes away. And when you see stacking, usually it's it's distributed in certain parts of the, the, the abdomen. Um, and cats, you can have GI in one part, the small intestine in one part of the abdomen, and it's a variation of normal. And dogs, they should really be sort of evenly distributed. And when you look, you go, there's some loops back here. There's some loops over here. There's some loops over here. And there are some loops sort of around there. So you go, okay, well, so they're relatively similar in size. This is a little bit too big. And this is a little bit too big. But it gets this feeling like they are fairly similar in size. Even though there was some stacking right here, when you flip the dog over, the stacking sort of disappeared which then to me makes it less likely a sort of permanent linear foreign body process. So this was a case that I saw earlier today. And I said, look, I, I think the dog has gastroenterocolitis and maybe it ate something uh, parasitic, uh, infectious, toxic, dietary intolerance, indiscretion. And it, you could get it in abdominal ultrasound now, but I also think this is a particular case where you could uh, repeat uh, the rads if the dog um, it's not better in 24 hours. Okay. Three views of the thorax. We got a couple of comments. Uh, can we do a thoracic one? Yeah. Here we go. Thorax. Okay. 
There's a dog. He's he's uh, he's coughing in Tekipnik. I read this the other day. Okay, so first thing we do, uh, right lateral view. The diaphragm are parallel, so we believe that the person that's uh, taking this left lateral view, the diaphragm diverges. Uh, VD view, the right uh, is is on the appropriate side. Okay, so we got three views of the thorax. What do you see going on? Yep. Yep. I like it. I like it. And then let's flip the dog on his back. Okay. Good. Good. So you're picking out, you're picking out, we got left atrial enlargement, left-sided cardiomegaly, uh, can't see obvious pulmonary edema. So that's the big question that we want to know. This, this person, when they submitted this case to us, they go, why is the dog coughing into Kipnik? And I can hear a heart murmur. Does the dog have cardiogenic pulmonary edema? So that's that's the big question. So what do we think? Does the dog have cardiogenic pulmonary edema or not? Caudal dorsal lungs. So worried about the caudal dorsal lungs. Okay, so we've got a right lateral view, a VD view, and a, uh, sorry, a left lateral view and a VD view. What's another view that we could use that would be really helpful to talk about um, the caudal and dorsal lungs? The University of uh, California, Davis, takes four views of their chest um, because the DV radiograph, yeah, the DV radiograph, you put the dog's sternum down, it aerates the caudal lung, and the gas, the black gas comes into the lung, and it helps with the differential attenuation of, of edema. And so if you've got cases of low-grade edema, then, then uh, you can pick that up on a DV. So on the VD view, one of the things that you got to be mindful of is you see this right here, that's the sternum. So the dog is tipped off in that direction, which is going to create the appearance that there's more of a, a, of a right-sided component. But if you really zoom in, you'll see that there's this opacity here and it's different than that opacity there. And again, we know that this opacity is the cardiac silhouette of the heart and that's fluid slash soft tissue. And we can see this border because this structure is less opaque than that structure. So that that's not gas. So the next one is fat. So this dog, you know, kind of fits decent amount of back fat on this dog. So this right side right here is probably accentuated by the patient's rotation and by the fat. So I, th this is a very large left atrium. The dog is rotated. There's a very large left atrium right here. The thoracic trachea is also devi de uh, deviated dorsally. So there's left-sided cardiomegaly. Um, the intrathoracic trachea is collapsed and the principal bronchi are collapsed. E the dog is rotated. And so that will cause some difficulty in diagnosing disease here. But this whole thing is collapsed. The principal bronchi, which should be right in here, are collapsed. And so this dog, stenting this dog with a, you know, a tracheal stent is going to be tough because the bronchi are smashed. When you smash the bronchi like this, it's harder to get air into the lung. And when it's harder to get air into the lung, it can create the impression that there's a lung pattern caudal dorsally. Now this is intrathoracic collapse, which means the dog was probably trying to push air out and it shut down. Um, and so it looked like maybe that there was a little bit of edema here. I agree with Stevenson. But then if you flip the dog over on the left lateral view, look, there's nothing here. Okay. So Right lateral view, I thought maybe is there edema. Left lateral view, not not bothersome to me. VD view, because if you're on the right side, you should be looking at the left caudal lung. So then you would say, all right, I'm going to flip the dog over. I'm going to look over here, and I just don't see it. Over here, things look a little bit more opaque, but the diaphragm is pushed forward. The dog is rotated. There's fat, and I can actually see these blood vessels really well. So I don't think that there's edema. So what I diagnosed was moderate to severe left-sided cardiomegaly without cardiogenic edema, tracheal and principal bronchus collapse, likely from chondromalacia. And if they were really worried clinically, they could do a DV thoracic radiograph, uh, soft tissue opacity, just ventral to L, L67 on the right lateral. T67, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All of this right here is uh, left atrium. There's probably a big blood vessel coming through here right there. And more importantly, there's just a lack of, of air because you've got a, a big heart and collapsed lung. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that there's anything. I think this is, this is all the cardiac silhouette. That's it. There's a big ass heart right here, big old left side of the heart and a collapsed airway, which is just making this look much more opaque collapse. I mean, th this dog cannot breathe. There's nothing to get through there.
Okay, I got one for you. I'm going to ask you a question. 337-342, 337-342. Okay, I'm just going to look at the chest. The cat is uh, coughing. I'm going to do, there's a lot more here, but I'm just going to do a, a couple of these reds. Okay, so there's this view, there's this view, and then there's this view. So does this, this is a cat. It's a geriatric cat, right? You got long lumbar vertebrae. You got some OA. He's kind of thin. You can see some spinous processes, probably has a paxial muscle atrophy. So you got an old, chronic, poor doing cat. He's coughing. You're freaking out because you're like, he's in heart failure. He's got to be. So does this cat have a, yeah, pneumothorax and pleural effusion? Okay, so I brought this up to be kind of an asshole. It's not normal. So don't expect, don't expect that. Um, so... Is the heart, where's the cardiac silhouette? Is it in the right or the left? The right or the left uh, side of the chest? Anybody want to say? It's right. It's got to be. It's over here, right? So the cardiac silhouette, I, I think I can see like a little bit of a, the heart is, the heart is, uh, is, is missing. It's, it's vanished. It's gone away, but it's, it's hiding right here. One of the ways that you can find it is if you hallucinate with me briefly, you'll see this border right here, this border right here. If you back up, you can see that that's the trachea, right? So you can find the trachea and it probably stops right here. So this sternal elevation is not because of a pneumothorax. The sternal elevation is because the heart has shifted to the side. So inside the chest, predominantly what's propping up the heart is the aerated lung on either side. So you've got well aerated lung props the cardiac silhouette. So when you put the cat on their side, it sort of sits and it looks like it's sitting on, on, on the sternum. So this isn't a case of something pushing the cardiac silhouette up like gas in the plural space. It's actually the result of something not propping it up. So it's, it's the invert inversion of what you would be sort of uh, originally worried about. So it's the absence of lung propping up, which allows it to roll away when you put the, the cat on its side. When you put the cat on its back, if this was plural fluid, the cardiac silhouette wouldn't deviate to that side, right? Because you would have a space occupying structure in the right side of the chest. And so if you don't have anything to prop the cardiac silhouette up, it deviates to that side. So unless this whole side is a pneumothorax and it's a tension pneumo pushing the cardiac silhouette to that side, is it being pushed or is it not being supported? That's really the main question. Is it being pushed or not supported? And so when you zoom in here and you look, you're like, well, I see some airways here. I, I, I kind of see some airways. I mean, I see an airway down there. I see these lines down here. I see these lines down there. So I don't think this is all like massive gas. So this is a case actually of not having an aerated right lung. And as a result of not being propped up, the cardiac silhouette shifts because it just doesn't have anything to prop it up. Now, the next question is, well, why is it, why has that happened? And it's atelectasis, collapsed lung from mucus plug. So that's a good, that's a good guess. And anything, there's a lot of different causes of, of atelectasis. One is bronchial, bronchial obstruction from anything, a tumor, a mucus plug, a foreign body, anything that blocks the bronchus, eventually it won't let air come in and the air distal to the obstruction gets resorbed the lung collapses, and then the cardiac silhouette shifts. Usually with mucus plugging, it's just a wimpy right middle lung collapse. Um, in order to collapse a caudal lung lobe, you've got it's got to be something big, like a foreign object or a mass that's invaded the bronchus. Um, the other thing that this could potentially be is there's something called cicatrizing atelectasis, where if you've had repeated disease in a lung, it just scars down and then it can't reinflate. Um, if you have a PTE and you take out surfactant, uh, you have what's called an adhesive atelectasis. Um, so that surfactant is, is important to maintain um, distended alveoli. So, you know, I don't know, uh, to, to, to answer your question, I think a lot of us have seen feline asthma and it doesn't look like this. So I, and, and this right here is, is bothersome. Like, is that a foreign body or is that a mass? Like, why is that so angular? I mean, I don't, I don't, I didn't like this sort of interface. When I saw this, I said, look, I think you need to do a thoracic CT. And obviously not everybody has a thoracic CT or can afford a, a thoracic CT, but 
sort of run of the mill asthma and mucus plugging, they don't take out the whole lung like this. They just don't do it because um, it's really hard to take out a, a caudal lung lobe. So yeah, I, I think this could be very chronic. Um, and maybe the cat has had a flare up of, of maybe it does have concurrent asthma and it's got cicatrizing atelectasis. I didn't like this angular interface. If this was a mass obstructing, I guess I wouldn't expect it to be so angular. Usually they're bulbous or rounded. So I wasn't convinced that this was a mass, but this kind of bothered me. Cats don't usually get inhaled foreign bodies. So I felt like that was a little bit weird. So I wasn't sure the cause. All I could help them with is that there's not a pneumothorax. I There's no pleural fluid in this cat. The cardiac silhouette is fine. It's just not being supported. And it's an old chronic poor doing cat that's got sort of a collapsed left lung, uh, right lung, and most of the, the left lung is overinflated to compensate for it. Rib five. One, two, three, four, five. This thing, that thing we call the in, in jest, the intern's pulmonary nodule. So what's happened here is the air comes down the trachea and then it hits the J hook of the uh cranial lobar bronchus to the cranial subsegment and to the caudal subsegment. And so that relative lucency creates this, uh, sorry, this lucency here that's normal creates this relative opacity that freaks us out. So we've had a question from Amelia. Can you come in on left lateral versus right lateral? Let me just click through this and see if I can't find. Okay, really quickly on this one. Would you cut this dog? Yes or no? The answer is no. Why is it no? Because he's got a bunch of rocks in his gut, right? And you're like, ah, he's eating rocks. He's an idiot. He's eating rocks. Yes, he's got cystic calculi. But even though he's got these rocks in the stomach, there's a ton of rocks that have made it into the colon. Yes, these may not make it. He's also got rocks. He's rocky. He's got rocks in his gall bag. He's got rocks in his urinary bag. He's got rocks in his colon and his stomach. But you got to relax and chill out on these things. Why? Because look, this is the first time he comes in. He's just like, nah. You leave me alone and I'm going to eat everything and I'm going to eat your rocks, right? And so you freak out and here's a good shot of the right versus left lateral, okay? So here we go. We'll do this, okay? So the pylorus is right-sided, right? Check. So when you put the dog with their right side on the table, okay? So this right side goes onto the table. All of this stuff tends to go this way into the pylorus, right? So on the right lateral view, it goes down here. Not, It doesn't have to all go down there, but, but it tends to shift down there. Then when you take the dog and you put them on their left side, away from the pylorus, all this stuff goes, and it looks like this, okay? So if stuff is sitting here on the left lateral view, that means it hasn't shifted out here. And so it potentially is stuck here. Okay, so here you could reasonably freak out a bit because you go, wow, there's some mineral. Here's the stomach outline and you go, wow, there's some mineral in the stomach right down here. And then I flip the dog over on the left lateral view and there's mineral in the pylorus. But what you don't do is don't don't interpret this in isolation. Don't just look at the stomach and go, oh, my God, there's still this mineral stuff in the pylorus on the left lateral view and we got to cut them. What you should do is take sort of a holistic approach and you go, wow, there's a ton of there's a ton of mineral in his colon. This loop is big. This dog, you could cut this dog and nobody's going to sue you. But the reason that we decided to relax on this dog is we said, look, he's got mineral here and a ton of it has made it into the colon. And yes, this is probably a pathologically distended segment of small intestine. And you objectively could cut the dog because he's objectively obstructed. But wouldn't it be nice to give him the benefit of the doubt and the owner's bank account the benefit of the doubt to see if some of it could continue to progress. You give them a little fluids, a little pain meds, you walk them around. Uh, and, and that's kind of what happened. So we monitored this dog over days and boom, look at this. Everything's getting better. And then we continue to monitor. Now, this is over days. He's still got stuff in his stomach. So we may have to do something. He hasn't come back. Uh-oh, did he come back? This is amazing. One of the things that's nice about working with tel uh, with with specialty clinics in particular, not always, but working with the same groups, we work with just the same groups, so we get the follow up. And look at this, damn, it's gone, and he's eating more. He feels great. Okay, so right versus left lateral view. Hopefully that helps. Okay, so don't always freak out. But when you flip the animal around into different laterality, if you drop them on the right side, 
you put his right side down on the table, all this funk should go into the pylorus and it'll look like this. And then when you flip them over, it should slide. It should. But as we learned in this case, which is a great case, it doesn't always do that. It's still stuck there and you kind of panic, but take a look. It's all, it's kind of dispersed. So, um, that's that. So yeah, I'll take this. I'll hit you guys up. I won't bog you down with a bunch of garbage in your email, but I, I think if we get a little group together. I enjoy this. Um, I feel like if I can get you guys to, to learn a little bit more rads radiology, you're going to feel more confident. We're going to help more dogs. It's, it's going to be gravy.